Hello, my name is Jane Webster from Milton Keynes Academy. And I'm Aaron Phillips from Caroline Chisholm School in Northampton. Research shows that the necessary aspects of learning come from identifying key concepts and misconceptions and identifying the concepts that are critical. In 1987, Newman did research with 105 six and seven year olds and they were asked how many fingers they had on their left hand. Not surprisingly, all of them said five. But to her surprise, she found that three out of 105 children said they had 10 fingers on their right hand. Puzzled by this, she looked further into the necessary aspects of number and it became clear that the three children had only mastered the ordinal property and so referred to their 10th finger as having 10 fingers on their right hand. The term mastery is used to describe a whole number of things. In this context, we're using mastery to describe mastering an educational objective and making sure that students are able to discern all the necessary aspects. And by doing so, we hope that misconceptions that originate from the fact that they discern some aspects but not others are able to be avoided. The basic planning model for Shanghai teaching, which all Shanghai teachers would be expected to follow, is they would need to identify the necessary aspects of learning. They would be expected to identify all possible misconceptions and by use of collaborative planning they would be able to discuss these elements and make sure they were delivering sequences of lessons that focused on key concepts and addressing those misconceptions. In Shanghai, teaching sequences are really important. When we look at rectangles, we usually do area and perimeter together. But doesn't it make much more sense to look at the key skill here and the key concept of addition and then teach perimeter with addition and then look at area when you look at multiplication? Many UK schools have tried this approach and found it very successful. There are many different types of variation theory, but our research is mainly focusing on these three key ideas, conceptual variation, concept and non-concept, and procedural variation. The following slides will demonstrate these three theories with examples from our schools and the schools we visited in Shanghai. Conceptual variation looks at multiple perspectives and experiences of mathematical concepts. It also importantly makes comparisons between all the different perspectives, so students make the link to themselves and choose their preferred and most appropriate approach. This is a lesson in a primary school in Shanghai. Students were expected to express 3 fifths plus 1 fifth using two separate diagrams. The misconceptions came through when they had to subtract 1 fifth from 3 fifths, again using the two separate diagrams. Conceptual variation is about highlighting the different representations of the same concept. This is either throughout the lesson or a series of lessons. Concept and non-concept is probably the easiest to plan for but with the biggest impact on student understanding. Concept non-concept is about highlighting what the concept is against a background of what it is not. These can be done in true or false activities. Often in Shanghai textbooks they will include true or false questions. This one here is on like terms. And here's one I prepared earlier on angle facts. The preciseness of language in Shanghai is so important and it's a thing that we tend to let slip a little bit. In Shanghai, from an early age, students are taught correct mathematical terminology and then are expected to use this in their lessons as they progress through the school. So here is concept non-concept using line segments, lines and rays terms that we don't tend to teach in the UK and again students are identifying what these things are and what these things are not. So again concept and non-concept is a process of highlighting common misconceptions by looking at the concept and the misconcept simultaneously. And finally we come to procedural variation. Procedural variation is perhaps the most difficult to understand at first, but it is something that we already do to a certain degree, and it is simply the carefulness and the cleverness of the way in which it's done in Shanghai that really makes an impact. So the two prongs to this are step-by-step -step connections and multiple approaches. Take division of a whole number by a decimal, for example. They're keeping one thing the same in order to develop the links and understanding in this concept. We would be good at teaching methods for dividing a whole number by a decimal, but we would tend to introduce it by using unconnected examples and just focus on that method. 
Because here, the jug is remaining constant, children can see for themselves that dividing by a number smaller than 1 actually results in a larger number and they've got the understanding of why. Similarly, because here, the non-zero digits are remaining the same, the 2 and 3, the 6 and 7, the 9 and 8, it is really highlighting to students the effects of place value when doing multiplication. And finally, for simultaneous equations, we would tend to teach the elimination method as standard. We might develop that into the graphical method as well, and it probably wouldn't be until we taught linear and quadratic simultaneous equations that we introduce the substitution method, or perhaps even we leave it until A-level. Generally, if we teach them separately, children will take the one they like the most and just reject the other two. But if we teach all three together and connect them and throw in some examples where substitution is the better method or the graphical solution is the better method, students can then develop their skills in understanding which method is the most appropriate for which case. In short, procedural variation encourages you to ask, what are we going to keep the same? What are we going to make different? And what important concepts is this going to draw out in the students' minds? We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Here is a brief summary of what we've covered. If you're interested in mastery and you would like further information, or you would just like to use some of the resources that we've prepared, please visit the Enigma Maths Hub website where you will find details on further research, you'll be able to get resources and access lots of video from Shanghai and the UK of real teachers teaching mastery in real lessons.